Hello there ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'm going to show you exactly how you can convert your survival Minecraft Java world to a bedrock world so that you can use ray tracing in your personal survival world. Let's get started. There is an article that is provided by NVIDIA that actually helps guide us through the whole process of converting your world from Java to bedrock. The first thing we need to do is a little bit of preparation. We need to prime and prepare our world to be converted from the Java version to bedrock. To get started, let's first open up our Java world. Once you have your game open, first I want you to do is check to make sure that your world is up to date with the latest version of Java. That is, as of the time of recording this, 1.16.4. If your world is not up to date, when you enter the world, you will be prompted to update your world and that should update it. What you need to do is click on the world that you would like to convert click on edit down over here, click make backup, and this will make a backup. After that, I want you to go into your world. Once you're in your world, do the following for me. Number one, make sure you are in your main survival base. Number two, I want you to make some chests. With these chests, we're going to take all of the items that are in our inventory and chuck them in here. The reason that we do this is when we do the conversion to move your world from the Java version to the Bedrock version is it doesn't always save player data. That includes your armor as well as your inventory. And finally, one more thing, press F3 and note down the coordinates of your base. So mine are minus 202, 142. Get a pen and paper or open up Word or something and write down those coordinates. You'll need them for later. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to locate our .minecraft folder so that we can create a copy of our world. If you do not know where your .minecraft folder is, go to your main storage drive, click on users, your name, look for app data, if you cannot find app data, go on to view over here and make sure that hidden items is checked. Click on app data, roaming, dot Minecraft, and go to saves from here. This is a list of all of the worlds that you have. The easiest thing that you can do to make a copy of your world is simply on your keyboard, press control C and then control V. Now just try and name the copy of your world to something that you know you'll be able to recognize. I'm just going to name mine, copy. Perfect, we've updated our world, We've made sure that we have everything in a chest, we've made a copy, and we've made a backup of the world. We are all primed and ready to start the conversion process. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to download the unofficial apps that are provided over here in the documentation. That is MCC Tool Chest and MCA Selector. By the way, the links will be provided in the description below, so you don't need to go looking for them. To download the MCA Selector, Click on download version 1.13.3. It might be a later version, don't worry about it. Number two, the MCC tool chest. This is the MCC tool chest download page. Just click on the first link over here. MCC tool chest PE bedrock version. Go to your downloads folder and the first application we're going to use is the MCA selector. So how does this application work? Well, the way the MCA selector works is it allows you to select different chunks in your world and delete specific chunks that you do not need. We want to make sure that we have as few chunks as possible that we need to convert from the Java version to the Bedrock version. The reason that we do this is because the conversion process is not perfect and there are going to be corrupted blocks and corrupted chunks that can sometimes cause problems when you're then playing on your world. So in order to minimize that, we're going to delete as many unnecessary chunks as possible. First of all, click on file, click open, and from here, you want to find your copy of the world. Select the folder, and then in that folder, select region. You won't find anything over here in the region, but simply say select folder. This will now open up a bird's eye view of your world map. You use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. You can click on the scroll wheel as well to move the map around. You can then select chunks and deselect chunks using the left mouse button and the right mouse button respectively. First of all, locate your Minecraft base. Take a mental note of where it is. Then zoom all the way out and select all of the chunks that you know are not part of your main base. Select those chunks and we want to delete them. Now, if you accidentally end up selecting a chunk that you do not want to select, again, just press that right click button and now we can go selection and delete selected chunks. Press OK. Remember, we're only messing around with the copy of our world. We're not playing around with the main version of our world. And if you mess up, you can always create another copy and try again. Now that you've deleted all the main chunks, we can zoom a little bit more and start fine tuning our chunk border again. Try and draw a fairly nice circle around your base. And now we can delete these chunks as well because they are not part of our main base and they'll be regenerated when we then create the conversion to the bedrock world. Click on selection, click delete selected chunks again, and again, it will pop up this warning, just press okay. The next thing that we want to do is we want to open up the bedrock version of Minecraft. With the bedrock version of Minecraft open up, we're going to go play and we're going to create a brand new world. 
All right, now when you create your brand new world, there are two things that I want you to look out for because we might be doing this a few times. First of all, go into settings, click on game and make sure that coordinates are shown. Number one, I want you to check the coordinates and see if they are relatively similar to the coordinates of your base. If you built your base in Java far away from where you originally spawned, don't worry about this step because there's not going to be much that you can do about it. Number two, see if the terrain in the new world that you've generated is similar to the terrain that you have in your Java world. The reason that you want to do this is because again, we're going to be copying all of the chunks from the Java world and pasting it onto the new bedrock world. This does mean that we're going to be getting chunk borders guys. And unfortunately, there's nothing that we can do about that just yet with the tools that we have available. So the best thing that you can do is simply try to find a world that is as similar to the terrain as you have in your main world so that the chunk borders can look as not as bad as possible, basically speaking. So when you're happy with the world that you've selected, save and quit. And we're going to go on to the final step in the process. And that is using MCC tool chest. Let's open up the zip file and inside there'll be a setup. Double click on the setup and follow the steps of the installation. When that's done, you can click finished. You should now be able to close this and have an application called MCC tool chest on your desktop. Open up MCC tool chest, go on to file, press open. And this is going to be a selection of all the bedrock worlds that you've created. Select the one that you were happiest with in terms of the terrain and the coordinates location. Here comes the magic. We're now going to take all of the chunks from our Java world and paste them onto the bedrock world. So go to tools, press convert and to bedrock. These are all of your Java worlds. Make sure to select the correct copy of the world that you'd like to convert, press copy and leave all of the settings over here exactly as is. I highly recommend that you do not convert the nether and the end dimension. Although possible, they do leave a lot of corrupted chunks and the conversion process is not very smooth. Press convert and this should take just a few moments to go through. Perfect, the conversion is complete. Depending on how large your world is, this could take several minutes, so do give it a little bit of time. When you're done, press close, go onto file, click save as, and we're going to save it as a new world. When you're happy with the world name that you've given it, press OK and you're all ready to close the application. Let's now open up Minecraft Bedrock. With Minecraft Bedrock open, open up your new world and here we are. Now one thing to remember is the coordinates that you wrote down. Go to the coordinates that you originally wrote down in this new world now in order to find your base because remember you will not spawn in the exact right position. Now as you're walking back you will unfortunately notice chunk borders and like I mentioned this is not something that we can avoid just yet. Perhaps in future when we get better tools we'll be able to actually fix this problem but for now this is something that we'll have to deal with. Something else you might notice whilst on your walk towards your main base is you'll see these sort of broken blocks that say update on them. Again this is something that unfortunately cannot be fixed yet. These update blocks mostly occur on top of a water pit and for some reason the conversion doesn't work very smoothly. The good news however though is that it's really easy to simply break these blocks immediately even in the survival world of Minecraft. Do note however that these blocks are very corrupted though and so if you try to interact with the block in any way using the block itself it will glitch out. So have an empty hand and clear out all of the mess over time. You are fortunately able to burn these blocks in lava or you can simply throw them away and they will despawn with time. Now something else I noticed as well whilst walking towards my main base is when I first load it up I do get performance issues. So one thing that I want to recommend is just very quickly save and quit, restart the game and the performance issues will most likely disappear. Now you can get ray tracing working on your own Minecraft Java survival world. By the way, if you're not sure how to get ray tracing working on any survival world, I have a tutorial about that as well over here or via the link in the description. And if you want more content on how to tinker with your Minecraft worlds, consider subscribing because that's exactly what I do over here on this channel. Finally, if you have any further questions or issues, please let me know down in the comments below and I will actively respond to as many people as I can. That's all for today, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy playing with your new Minecraft experience.